Uh, now, the, the, the determinant is a multilinear function, but it's also a, it's a function that preserves multiplication. Linear maps, remember, they preserve vector addition and they preserve scalar multiplication. Uh, multilinear means it's linear in every factor, in every, in every variable. Uh, now, when it comes to linear maps, we don't make any requirement that a linear map preserves multiplication because for a typical vector space, there is no notion of, of vector multiplication. But for matrices, we can multiply them. And so it does actually beg the question, can the determinant preserve, can it preserve multiplication? And the answer to that question is yes, the determinant is a map that preserves matrix multiplication. The determinant of A times B is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. So I wanna give you an example of such a thing. Uh, so consider the following. Um, if we take the determinant of A, six, one, three, two, uh, this is just a two by two. So we're gonna get six times two. Uh, so kind of remember how we do this one. Um, you're gonna take the product of this diagonal and subtract it from the product of this diagonal. So you get six and two, which is 12, minus one and three, which is three, that gives you nine. Um, if we do the next one, four, three, one, and two. Again, for two by twos, you take the diagonals, four, two, three, one. The ones that go to the right, you're gonna add. The ones you go to the left, you're gonna subtract. And so you get four times two, which is eight, minus three times one, which is two. Eight minus two equals six all right uh actually i made a i made a goof somewhere didn't i um we had four three one two uh so oh where did where did the where did the two come from i'm sorry uh so four times two is eight then you get three times one which is a three make that fix no one's gonna notice uh and therefore eight minus three equals five there we go now let's multiply together a and b like so. So we get six, one, three, two, and times that by the matrix four, three, one, two. When we multiply those together, first row, first column, we are going to get six times four, which is 24 plus one, so that's a 25. Then this first row, second column, six times three is 18, plus one times two, which is two. Should that give us a 20 uh, right there? Uh, second row, first column, three and four is 12, two and one is two, so 12 plus two is 14. And then lastly, the second row, second column, three and three is nine, two and two is four, and nine plus four is 13. So if we calculate the determinant of their product, 25, 20, 14, and 13, uh, this one will be a little bit more difficult, but we can do it, 25 times 13, uh, that is equal to 325. And then we're going to get 20 times 14. Uh, that's 280. And then 325 minus 280 equals 45. And 45, notice, is 9 times 5. So the product of the matrices has the determinant, which is the product as well. And there are tons and tons of consequences of this multiplication preserving property of the determinant that I want to talk about in this lecture right here. So for example, a matrix is non-singular. It has an inverse if and only if the determinant is not zero. And in that case, the determinant of A inverse is just equal to the reciprocal of the matrix. And the idea is the following. The proof is actually pretty short and slick right here. If a matrix is non-singular, that means there exists... Uh, an inverse, so that's product equals the identity. If you take the determinant of both sides, you get the determinant of A, A inverse, and the determinant of one. Well, because of the factorization property, the left-hand side becomes the determinant of A times the determinant of A inverse. And then what's the determinant of the identity matrix? Well, like we talked about in the previous lecture, if you have a triangular matrix, uh, which diagonal matrices are triangular, uh, the determinant is just the product of the diagonals. Well, the identity matrix is di diagonal with ones along the diagonal. So the determinant of the identity is always equal to one. And so the only way a product of two things can equal one is only if uh, the factor, the factors can't be zero. And in fact, if you solve for the determinant of A inverse, you end up with one over the determinant of A. 
So invertible matrices have reciprocal determinants. And in particular, a matrix will be non-singular exactly when uh, it has a non-zero determinant.